Eric, welcome. Thank you. Uh, share with us uh, your life before what happened, the, the chaos, and how you got to meet Jesus and what Jesus did for you. I've been a Christian for 20 years. Uh, but for 40 years, my entire life, I have struggled with addiction to things like pornography and sexual things. And it has, uh, even though as I was a Christian, it still plagued me. And four years ago, it came out that I was having an affair and I lost everything in one weekend because of it. Even though I was a Christian, it was still a struggle in my mind and my heart and everything. And I couldn't break free from it. And I lost everything that weekend. My marriage, my children, both my jobs, I became homeless. And that was the day that God said, it's time. And then he started me on a journey of rebuilding my life. But he started from the ground up. He had to break me down. And then about six months later, when God had given me a small business, and about six months later, I started that business in my friend's garage while I was living in his basement. I still had lost so many things in my life, but God was slowly rebuilding those things, bringing them back conversation after conversation, these kinds of things with people, all sorts of stuff. And he took me to the lowest point in my life standing in that garage. He, one day he came to me, held a divine mirror up in front of me and said, you are the man. You did this, and I had nothing left because he exposed everything in me. He brought it all to the surface, and he said, you have no excuses. That's it. It's done. And that was my lowest day, the lowest day of my life. Uh, and, and he kind of let me just wallow in that for a couple of hours. He let me understand really who I truly was, that Holy Spirit divine exposure. And then after that, he came back to me that same day, and he said to me, you are a fighter. I've allowed these circumstances to be stacked up against you for a reason. I've, you've lost everything. Everything has been taken from you. You have been turned against by just about everybody around you because of your sin. But I've allowed the circumstances because I called you to be, from the moment you were born, to be a fighter. You've been one your entire life. The problem is you have been at war with everybody around you since you were a little boy. So it's time for you to get into the right fight. Stand up and get out there and start fighting for the hearts of the people around you now, go. And when he said that to me, something inside of me changed permanently. And I stood up and I couldn't help but just move. I was so broken and because of the shame, everything inside of me for so many years, being lying and hiding, and I was just, I couldn't just stand up. But God stood me up and said, go. And that day he sent me out after my daughter, my adult daughter who wanted nothing to do with me. And he drove me to her work. And I marched in that door and I said, I've got one thing to say to you. I love you. And what I didn't know was that morning she had reached her lowest point ever. And God told her, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give the throw in the towel. And he said to her, or she said, she started crying out to him. I just want someone to tell me they love me. And that was the day God broke my heart and sent me after my daughter. But that began the process in my life of rebuilding. And God knew that I had to stand up and fight. And the biggest battle ever started from within me. He started bringing it out of me. And he started taking me to the darkest places in my life. The deepest, darkest places. The scariest places. We all know those spots in our hearts and minds. And he started taking me there. A couple years later, he took me to some counseling in Montana. In the middle of that week, he showed me, I have never truly rested in that, that salvation that I've been given. Hebrews chapter 3 and 4 talks about resting in Christ, sitting on what he had finished and completed. And I realized I'd never been that because I thought he was going to reject me just like everybody else had. And I knew the only way to heal was to give him access to my entire heart, and I couldn't do it. Largest leap of faith I ever took was hiking up a mountain that week. And when I got halfway to the top, I told the Lord, I'll sit and rest as soon as I get to the top. And he said, no, stop right here, sit and rest. And as soon as I did that, two footsteps to the left, I sat on the ground and I started bawling. 40 years worth of pain, 40 years worth of rejection, all the stuff from a little boy, all the trauma started coming to the surface. God said, do not move until I tell you to, stay here. And I fell asleep right there on the ground and I cried. And I cried and I slept and I woke up and God said, you can move along. He told me to stay there until I tell you to move. And he said, you can move. And after that, I started making my way back down. I got to the bottom. I started driving away in my truck. And God said this, two people went up that mountain today, but only one came down. That sad, scared, broken little boy was laid to rest up there. And he said to me, I did that. Enter into my rest. Your strivings have ceased. Come on, give God a shout of praise for that. This is so awesome. This shows us how we, when we surrender, 
completely our pain, our issues, our heartbreaks, everything to God and give our problems into his hands. He'll put peace into our hearts. And Eric, can you tell us what happened afterwards and how God continued to restore your life? So uh, even through all of those things, I still struggled with those things. I still hid them and I couldn't break free from them. I had accountability software on everything, even the toaster. I mean, it, and I went to meetings, I did all these things, and I still couldn't get away from it until the Race to Deliver conference. The Sunday morning, the Sunday morning, I went forward for prayer. I thought I was leaving because I had to get to a birthday party. God drove me to the front. And I stood there praying. I don't know who it was, hands up in the air, eyes closed. Someone started praying over me, and they moved on. Then somebody else came and started praying over me also. And they started praying this prayer, and they just prayed and prayed. And it started getting more intense and more intense. And all of a sudden, they started saying things like, come out of him right now. Come out of him. Get out of him. And I'm just bawling. Come, leave her. Just go. Get out of this man. And then he said, leave and never come back in Jesus' name. And he turned around and walked away. I didn't realize until about two or three day, days later that I had been delivered from 40 years worth of addiction to pornography and sexual addictions. Come on, give God a shout of praise in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is so awesome. And what did God continue to do for you? God has continued to show me what it means to be a man. He showed me what it means to be a husband. Uh, I, I lost my marriage, but he showed me, he took me to a place in my own heart. He came to me once and he said, am I your beloved? And what he meant by that was, am I the only thing you have? If the only thing that I could give you is who I am, will you take that? And he showed me how to be a husband because we are his bride. And he taught me how to do those things. And he's walked me through this healing process with people, person after person. But he showed me how to be a man. God will not take the burden from off your shoulders, men. He's only going to strengthen your back, widen your shoulders, and you know, steady your footing. He's not going to relieve it. The pain won't go away. The addiction will not solve the pain. And you have to confess it and get it out in the open. And that's, yeah. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. That's so awesome to see what God has done in your life. And Eric, what is some word of advice for people, for men, or maybe some people that, that have lost everything, like with marriage, with kids and everything, and maybe they find themselves in your, your position where they were for years in addiction, they can't get set free from. What word of advice can you give them? I had a prophetic, war, or a prophetic word spoken over me at a different church. And the man came to me and spoke exactly what God had been speaking to me. He said to me, do not give up. The second half of your life is coming. The second half of your, your life is coming. I've got a double blessing and a double portion, but do not give up. Give it all to me. And, and the other thing that I have to say, it, just don't quit. Don't quit. It'll be hard. It'll be difficult, but don't quit. And the other thing is it has to be spoken out loud. You have to confess it. It'll be the scariest thing you've ever done, but that's, where the, be that's the beginning that's where it begins. Come on. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Come on. Give, let's put our hands together for Eric and what God Almighty has done in his life.